Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of container farms. So right off the bat, let's talk about what container farms are. Container farms are a big term that describe a few different kinds of farms out there. Now the majority of container farms are built inside of used freight containers. And that's the thing that we're going to talk about today. However, there are some companies uh, that are building like customized uh, containers that are more like prefabricated buildings or grow rooms than they are, say, a shipping container. So that's an important thing to understand and to know. Um, this is kind of a hard topic for us. Historically, we've kind of shied away from it because we've had customers in the space. But uh, we, we think it's time to, to have this conversation because we've seen a lot of farmers failing in the space and we need to be honest about what indoor farming is and what indoor farming isn't in order to really see this industry grow and serve communities and serve uh, this country and our food supply the way we know it can. So let's start off with the good. So container farms have risen in popularity because they are compact, uh, they're contained, you ship them in, you drop them in place, they hook them up, and uh, you can get growing. And so uh, that has led to uh, widespread adoption and um, a lot of people using these to kind of get businesses started. They're great uh, because they are contained and because they are modular. That is, they can be outfitted or manufactured somewhere else, then shipped to site and dropped in place. That's really convenient for some people. Um, they're also small and compact, so uh, whereas you used to have to go out and find like a warehouse space that's a certain size or something like that, um, now uh, you can drop one of these, say, behind a restaurant. So outside, right behind a restaurant, it's compact, it's convenient, it fits in a lot of different places, and that also makes it a fairly convenient uh, deal for folks. Containers are also readily available. So. Um, Historically, everyone's thought about uh, uh, cheap space as being the best space, and this is something we're going to talk about in kind of the bad and the ugly sections of this. Um, you know, they are inexpensive. You can find used shipping containers all over their place. There's entire companies that specialize in trying to sell used shipping containers because um, there, there's a huge supply of them. When a refrigerated unit breaks down, when the refrigeration unit goes out, it's actually cheaper for the company to scrap uh, the container itself then fix the refrigeration unit. And for that uh, reason, we ha end up with tons and tons of used refrigeration uh, you know, units or, or refrigerated containers on the market all over the world. So another great thing about these, and this is kind of uh, has to do with the modular, is that the, the form factor is ideal for shipping. So if you want to manufacture these somewhere and ship them somewhere else long distances on a container boat, everything, the infrastructure is all there to deal with it. Now it does beg the question of why you want to ship a farm across the world, but uh, it can be said that these are very, very easy to move from one place to another. Everyone knows how to do it. Uh, you can get almost any shipping company in the world to come pick a farm up and move it. If you're a farmer and you move a lot or if you have a need to move your farm for some reason, uh, that can be a very convenient thing for you. The other great thing about um, containers is that there are a lot of companies getting into the space, diving in, and doing uh, this type of, of, of work. So at, over time, we're going to see a lot more value-focused companies kind of come to the space, farmer-centric companies coming to the space, competing with each other, and driving costs down, driving pricing down uh, for everyone. And I think that's almost always a great thing. So that's the good. Those are some of the good aspects of this. Let's dig in uh, to some of the bad and some of the ugly. And uh, a lot of these kind of cross-reference each other. So some of the good things also kind of have some bad sides to them. And so we just want to kind of dig into this and understand better like the constraints of container farming uh, versus something else. So the first big drawback is that containers weren't designed to grow plants, and containers were designed to move uh, products all over the globe really, really efficiently on boats and planes, trains, automobiles, whatever. Um, containers are designed for, for that specific purpose. They're not a general purpose product. They are very specific, uh, specialized product. And they're very, very good at what they do. Uh, 
So um, here at Bright Agar Tech, we believe that uh, intent informs design. That is, as a designer, you always start at square one and you try to design something that, uh, that is pointing toward this specific outcome. And that's very easy to do when you start at square one. It's much harder to do when you take a product that's designed for something entirely different and modify it in a way that it allows you to do a very specialized thing. And so uh, this is one drawback of containers. They do require a lot of work to make them work as a plant growing environment. And even then, it will never be ideal. It will always kind of be a bit of a compromise because again, these are designed for shipping products, not necessarily for growing plants. As a result of that, environmental controls in containers can be very difficult. Now, let's be clear here. There are kind of two types of containers out there. One is the custom side, which is growing very rapidly. On that side, you have um, you know, companies like Modular Farms, who is, uh, they're, they're building out these things that almost look more like prefabricated buildings and containers. They're all custom made for growing. That's a very different situation from growing inside of a uh, cramped, used shipping container. That's a totally different scenario if you've ever kind of stepped inside the two, uh, the two different form factors. Um, with that being said, environmental controls can be really tough. Uh, some of that has to do with layout, which we'll talk about later. But um, you know, humidity control, uh, because it is such a tight space, applying enough heat that you can act, or enough light that you're not going to overwhelm your facility with heat, and uh, basically going through uh, all of the different growing processes, you become more and more limited as you consider growing inside of, say, a shipping container versus a dedicated container or a facility that's designed. Uh, for growing. So the other uh, difficulty with containers, and this is primarily uh, shipping containers at this point, again, like if you're getting a brand new container, this isn't going to be a problem. Uh, if you're getting a brand new container, it might be uh, in, in really good shape. But what we've seen is a lot of farmers um, end up seeing their uh, their containers, their used shipping containers deteriorate very quickly. Uh, even so far as we've had uh, some farmers who have had their container condemned. So the city has basically come in and condemned it. They couldn't farm in it. They couldn't use it uh, because the roof was collapsing. These containers live a rough life. They're transported all over the world and they're hit with salt water and wind and UV light and sun just constantly around the clock, um, sometimes for decades. And so um, it's just really important to understand how that affects the structure of the container itself. Uh, by the time these things are sold off, they're not sold off because they're usable anymore uh, as, a freight, as a shipping container, as a freight container, right? Uh, they're sold off because they're at the end of their lifespan. So consider very carefully, inspect very carefully uh, any used shipping container type farm that is, uh, you know, that, that is built inside of that type of a, a product. Um, there have been a lot of farmers that have paid the price uh, for all of those years out on the open ocean. So the next topic is light and heat and light and layout. So um, shipping containers are pretty tight. Most of the time they're about eight and a half feet wide and about seven and a half feet, no, seven and a half feet wide and eight and a half feet tall. And so um, what that means is that you're pretty condensed. You have to grow in a pretty condensed uh, space. Now, horizontal, there's a lot of horizontal systems out there that um, are pretty decent. There are uh, some vertical systems out there uh, that, are, that are pretty decent. Um, my favorite layout is actually much very similar to a zip farm. So basically where you have corridors with lights down the corridors, towers back to back in the middle, and towers along the walls. And it gives you lots of air circulation within that growing environment and keeps those plants really healthy. Um, there are other layouts where, where towers are closer together, facing each other, plants are kind of growing into each other. And in those layouts, uh, you have to use much lower powered lights. What does that mean? Well, there's a linear relationship be between the light that we put into an environment and the biomass or the output. So as we, uh, as we put uh, light into the environment, uh, we see biomass over here, uh, and as the light increases, 
um, we see biomass increase in an almost linear way. What does that mean? It means if we double our light, we're going to double our biomass within the same time period for most crops and within a certain range. What does that mean? Well, that means that when you condense, when you have these really tight aisles, you end up with plants that can't quite, um, you, you can't just, you can't dump as much light uh, into them because you have this heat problem that starts to arise. And uh, because also with LEDs, you know, uh, your heat generation is a function of the wattage that you put in. So if you double up on lights, you double up on heat, typically. And so this kind of becomes a problem in um, setups that are super, super dense. It's one of the reasons why uh, spreading things out and giving more space, more room for air circulation allows you to put more lights in uh, more efficient HVAC, more efficient air conditioning, and it allows you to grow a lot more plant material uh, per square foot or per tower, uh, simply because you're able to apply more light. So the next area that you need to think really hard about before you purchase a container farm is the idea of people in the environment. Now there's two things here. One is just access. So the ability to go in and to see your plants, to be able to monitor growth, monitor pests visually, and just keep your eyes on things really, really easily. In this regard, I would recommend visiting a variety of the container farms out there. There's a number of, of companies. Uh, that you, they've got lots of customers kind of all over the place, or you can go to the headquarters, whatever, and you can visit actual farms and just kind of see how you respond to them. Um, Shipping containers, for me, are a bit too tight. They feel very claustrophobic. And uh, putting all the environmental issues aside, just working inside of that type of an environment um, is, doesn't always feel awesome. So make sure you try it out before you commit to it, because you're going to be spending quite a bit of time in there on a weekly basis. Um, consider how you can access the plants as well. So not just like your own psychology, uh, your own mental health, you know, working in this tight, cramped spot, space, but like being able, to, uh, being able to walk up and down aisles and check on plants becomes a really important thing, both from a plant health and management standpoint, as well as just kind of a, a, an enjoyment standpoint. So the next thing we want to talk about is the cost of a farm. And um, my caveat here is that cheap is never cheap. So um, when it comes to uh, container farms, a lot of folks really started to dig into containers because they're very inexpensive. They're cheap. They're really cheap structures. You can get them a lot of different places and you can get them very inexpensively. Well, in my experience, cheap is not always the best way to go. I've gone cheap a number of times and it's typically bit me. Now, you can make do with cheap, but what you're doing there is you are transferring a lot of your capex or your initial capital expense out into the future in the form of operational expenses. It means you're going to have to do more work down the road to keep everything on the rails rather than spending more money on something that's a little bit different up front. Um, that requires less maintenance in their long run. This is my biggest uh, concern with, with shipping containers, used shipping containers uh, as a whole, are that uh, they typically are well used and they don't stand up really well in the long term compared to something that's dedicated and designed for growing. So All right, so the next idea is the idea of comparative output. Now, this is the idea that your output isn't just judged on the basis of your output and what the market will absorb, but it's also based on the output of people around you. You know, this space will become more competitive over time, and so it's important to understand how you stack up against your competitors. It also introduces this idea of uh, dollars of capex versus uh, per uh, pound of output. This is a really important thing to understand because um, this is just kind of like a fundamental metric. There are lots of them out there, but the idea is there are some numbers that just become crystal clear uh, that tell you like whether or not you're spending your money on the front end wisely. This number here, how many pounds on an annual basis your farm will produce, not heads, stay away, don't talk about heads of lettuce, don't talk about uh, numbers, anything but this number pounds of output. That is the most truthful thing that you can focus on at the beginning because most customers ultimately won't be purchasing on a head basis. Not if you're trying to sell them teeny tiny little heads. You need to be selling them something that is a market equivalent, right? Now some growers can go out and get great pricing right now um, and that's fine, but you have to th be thinking ahead to what a more competitive market looks like and be preparing for that.
So know this number, put this together. How many dollars, you know, if your farm costs $90,000 um, and we'll put out, you know, 2,000 uh, pounds per year, um, you know, but you have an opportunity to say, uh, buy something that costs, let's say, uh, twice, 150% this, what is that? Uh, that that would be like $135,000, right? But it puts out um, 4,000 pounds per year. Um, this is probably a better investment, right? I mean, you still have to understand OPEX. This is overly simplified. But um, this is going to be a better investment than this. So know your numbers really well and be thinking really hard about this number here. and. Make sure you're centering in every single conversation on pounds of output. If you're a producer, that is critical, critical, critical. I don't care where you're at. I don't care what you're growing with, whether you're in a warehouse, whether you're in a greenhouse, whether you're in the field, or whether you're in a container of some kind. Pounds of output are the only thing that matters in respect to the dollars in, capex and opex. So I hope you've stuck with me through this video. I know it's kind of a bit of a longer one, but I think it's an important starting point for a conversation around the different kinds of containers out there and their value in the indoor farming space. A lot of the time they're super useful for very specific applications and not very useful for others. And um, one thing that uh, we want to encourage everyone to do, uh, because we don't want to be super negative about these kinds of things, we want everyone to just go out and do their own research and come to their own conclusions on this. But the critical things here are really coming down to this capex per pounds of output number. Don't talk heads, don't, uh, don't talk about output in anything but pounds. And if you center it in on pounds, it allows you to uh, find out the truth kind of around uh, the pr productivity of these farms very, very quickly and helps you as the farmer, you as the grower, make the best possible decision when it comes to uh, buying a farm or implementing a farm. So the big takeaways here are always get it from the horse's mouth. Uh, every company out there, every reputable company is going to encourage you to talk with the people who have succeeded and the people who have failed with their products. Talk with both. Don't get a one-sided approach to things. Um, if you're talking with the people who have failed and the people who have succeeded, you're gonna get the full picture, the whole story, and you need the whole story to make the right decision. Um, the other thing is to focus in on pounds, so total production, all right? And especially this number, dollars of capex or, or dollars of capex and dollars of opex, doesn't really matter. You should be combining those, thinking about these uh, in whole and not just one at a time, but really zoning in on something like dollars of capex per pounds of output. Pounds, pounds, pounds. And um, if you're thinking about it in this really rigorous way, uh, it's gonna help you make the best decision when it comes to the farm that you choose whether that is uh, growing outdoors, growing in a greenhouse, growing in a warehouse, or growing in a container, whether it's a used shipping container or whether it is a dedicated, custom-made, ground-up type container that, uh, that is being produced now. So the last thing is to make sure that there is a clear understanding of the differences between a prefabricated or custom-fabricated container and a used shipping container that's been retrofitted to try and grow plants in. Um, as the consumer, you need to think very carefully about uh, this one versus that one because you're gonna be spending a lot of time there or you're going to employ people that will be spending a lot of time in there. And output, as always, is a huge concern for you as the grower. You need to be maximizing your output and maximizing your economics. In conclusion, thanks so much for watching. Let's continue the debate in the comments below. Whether you agree or disagree, your opinions, your experiences, your thoughts matter a lot. Our goal is to move the industry forward, and part of that is helping farmers make the right decisions around the equipment uh, that they choose to set up to get their farm started and to be economically viable in the marketplace.